I find that it's very difficult to try to get into the industry through screenwriting. And yes, um, I did shoot clutch with that uh, 50 millimeter lens. I was trying to, uh, well, my budget wasn't that much. I was trying to avoid having to rent out lights. All it takes is one person calling out and then having to, to reschedule um, or try to find a replacement, which is going to back things up. You're listening to the Fanboy Film Talk Podcast. Hey folks, this is uh, Brian Green. You're listening to Fanboy, the Fanboy Film Talk, Talk Podcast. And this is a podcast designed to help those aspiring filmmakers, the ones that's kind of sitting on the fence of whether they should do it or not, or how to do it, and all that good stuff. And uh, try to get some questions on here to, to help forward getting the idea of your movie out of your head and onto something, something tangible, on a, whether that be your, your home screen or a big screen. I'm sure you would prefer the big screen, but, you know, got to start somewhere. Get get something done just so you can say that you had something done. Um, in the course of this uh, particular podcast, the, the subject matter is going to be screenwriting. And I probably will do several versions of these, but uh, in this particular version, we're uh, going to start with that. Well, exactly what it is—the beginning. You're going to start with the beginning. How, how do you even get yourself up off of the, the couch, out of your chair, to even begin to decide that? How do I stretch this idea out? Because there are many, many, many people that I can tell you that have had what they would consider phenomenal movie ideas but not necessarily know how to stretch that out to a full 90 minutes worth of dialogue and scenes and, you know, character development, so on and so forth. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're going to try to go into that a little bit. And as, as this, again, as this goes on, I'm going to grab some other people to, to fill in the voice. So this, we'll just call this screenwriting volume one. That's a good way to go with it. Screenwriting volume one. Um, there, there's also something I wanted to share, um, and this is not from me. So before anybody goes off and says, oh, you don't know what you're talking about is you can go blame somebody else. This, the source is good in a room.com. This is a blog for screenwriters and it is a list of the 10 books for screenwriters that agents, managers, executives, and stars and directors refer to the most. Uh, of course, this again is from goodinaroom.com. The uh, run by Stephanie Palmer, which is a former MGM film executive. So if you have issue with this list, you can go blame her. I did not create it. Uh, and in no particular order, the uh, first book is Adventures in the Screen Trade by William Goldman. Adventures in the Screen Trade. Um, the art of dramatic writing is number two, and I am not going to attempt to butcher this gentleman's name. So you're just going to have to look up the title on that. The art of dramatic writing. Number three, making a good script. Great by Linda Seeger. Number four on directing film by David Mamet. Number five, save the cat. The last book on screenwriting you'll ever need by Blake Snyder. This is a uh, number six is one that I had known, I, I think, from uh, using the final draft. I think they, they had some work with him. Sid Field. The title book is Screenplay, The Foundations of Screenwriting. Number seven, uh, David Trottier. The Screenwriter's Bible. I might be pronouncing his name wrong, but you'll you'll get the idea if you look up the book. Number eight, Robert McKee, who wrote Story, Substance, Structure, Style, and the Principles of Screenwriting. Number nine, which is a uh, dual header, Writing Movies for Fun and Profit, Robert Ben Garrett and Thomas Lennon. Number 10, The Writer's Journey, Mythic Structures for Writers by Christopher Vogler. 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 Yeah. Okay. There we go. Christopher Vogler, the writer's journey. So again, that's not, that is in no particular order and I'm not getting anything by mentioning this. Uh, these people do not know me. 
But I will say this, that if you go to the um, the website, you can get a free ebook, which is written by Stephanie Palmer, again, former MGM film executive. And the title, How to Take a Hollywood Meeting, How to Take a Hollywood Meeting, which I'm pretty sure a lot of people, especially those that are going into the uh, script writing genre of the field, really want to know how to take a Hollywood meeting. And, and more importantly, you know, th this is another topic that I'm going to have to take on at some point is how do you pitch? Because that is one thing I suck at. I cannot pitch my idea for anything. And, you know, I, I tend to um, agree with one of the screenwriters that say, you know, it's an, it's kind of a odd thing to pitch an idea of a thing, which is already an idea in and of itself is this, the script in itself is a description of the movie. And now you have to describe the description of the movie. So, yeah, I, I, I do fall into that category. It is kind of tough. And I do not know how to pitch anything. I, you know, I, I just I can't, I can't get it out. I just don't know how to make it work as a uh, as a pitch artist. And, um, you know, I don't want to say unfortunately, but you do have to work that into your spiel somewhere at some time. Uh, where I got that from is this is my personal um uh, recommendation. If you have not seen the documentary Tales from the Script, you need to go watch it. Not that it teaches you how to do this stuff, but it certainly will give you some insight on what you're up against. They have several highly noted screenwriters in that documentary, uh, some of which are telling you stories about uh, despite the fact that they've had hits coming out of the park, you know, uh, you know, some of them, I think one or two of them sold huge, like on script number one. And after that it's like, okay, well, you, where do you go now? Uh, you know, you got the guys that wrote Bruce almighty and they, they I think they, they were talking about a, a script that they still have kind of sitting in on, on deck somewhere called Magooch. It is a odd title, but it's a dark comedy. Um, the guy that wrote the last boy scout, you know, that they, they have several people in there and, and, you know, they are fascinating stories. Some of them good, some of them bad, but they're fascinating stories. And that, and, uh, if you're going to take anything away from this, you should take the list of the top 10 provided by, uh, good in and you should take away my personal suggestion, uh, for tales from the script in a moment after my, uh, quick break. I will be back with my guest who's going to help me talk about my uh, or the, the journey into script writing, the effort, sometimes the heartbreak of uh, <laughs> trying to pursue a, a, a life or in a career writing scripts and movies. So we will be back and just give me a moment and we will pop this thing off. Stay tuned. My first console I remember playing was the Atari 2600. I remember saying like, wow, look at the graphics. I never thought it would mount to anything. He informs us they want to pay this $30 million. It was like, what? Video games vastly differ from every other kind of media. A good video game is probably the hardest thing to make. The whole point of the game was literally shooting pixelated aliens that were falling out of the sky. Nowadays, not only do we know why those aliens are falling out of the sky, we know the names of their moms. And we know we have to destroy all of them. They've evolved into truly global experiences. It's a borderline religious experience. And just something about blowing your friend in half, nothing is more satisfying. I have lifelong friends that I've met just playing together online. It's the ultimate example of art and science working together. It's making a movie times a thousand. Back in the early days, we really did look forward to a day where video games would be interactive movies. Video games in the next 30 to 40 years are going to be unimaginable, where you can live the dream that you've always wanted to live.
That was a trailer from Video Games the Movie from the executive producer Zach Braff comes the epic feature length documentary chronicling the meteoric rise of video games from nerd niche to a multi billion dollar industry. Featuring in depth interviews with the godfathers who started it all, the icons of game design, and the geek gurus who are leading us into the future. Video Games the Movie is a celebration of gaming from Atari to Xbox and an eye opening look at what lies ahead. It is available to own when it hits theaters in the United States and Canada. For more information, go to videogamesthemovie.com. All right, folks, we are back with the uh, Fanboy Film Talk podcast. And joining me in the spacious CSB studios, I'm not at the uh, the beautiful All The Way Live studios today, not, not at this particular moment. I am uh, in CSB, which I, which was my old stomping grounds. And for those of you that are looking to do radio and TV, you can come to CSB and learn your trade. That's uh, uh, several locations across the country. I'm sure, uh, you know, I can't remember the exact number. I'm going to say about 10 or so. And, and you can go online and prove me wrong at GoCSB.com. And you can learn all about this stuff. You can learn about writing the board. And, and if you don't want to even do radio and, uh, and the in-studio engineering work, you can always learn some some level of television. So go CSB.com, barring their studios day. And we have to give them a quick plug for that. that and that's, that's a freebie. <laughs> that's a freebie for the studio. Uh, joining me today is Ashley Davison, who is a aspiring screenwriter and uh, author who's going to give the perspective of climbing the mountain which is uh known as the career of screenwriting as uh some of you out there again the the aspiring ones of us you know you, you need to know what you're facing so this is this is what this particular podcast is about you, you have to know your enemy so the, here it is we're going to talk about that ashley how are you I'm fine, and thank you, Brian, for having me here. I really appreciate that. That's right. we, we thank you. Thank you for coming in and uh, sitting down and, and sharing some of the stuff. You know, uh, I know sometimes people don't necessarily want to talk about the, the, the ills of trying to pursue an artistic endeavor. So, <laughs> you know, I, I, I talk about as much as uh, what I've done wrong as what I've done right. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's all good. Um First off, what what aimed you at wanting to do or wanting to be a screenwriter? Well, for me, it's because of my passion and love for movies. I have been, I feel like movies are in my DNA. Ever since I was a child, I've been watching movies nonstop. It seems I'm a huge movie fan, movie goer just movie fanatic. So I've always loved movies. I've always wanted to be a part of the industry to some capacity. And screenwriting, I feel, is a great fit for me just because I love writing. Growing up, I was watching movies and reading books all the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm one of those people who would be in class and just like do, doodling story ideas in their notebooks. And I, I always love... Um, I always loved writing and just storytelling in general, I guess. And so I feel like using writing, combining writing and then my love for movies, I feel like that's something that I would really enjoy doing. And I would I would love to try to take a stab at it and try to, you know, be successful in that area. <laughs> that, that is always the keys. <laughs> that, that is all what we aim for there. We'll try to take a stab at it and uh, be successful at it. But now... Um, Let's start with the let's start at the top. Have you come across any difficulty <laughs> in um, the in the pursuit? Most definitely. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I um you know I'm I'm semi new to all this, trying to um, get my foot in the door, try to get my feet wet. I'm definitely learning as I go. I am by no means an expert at this. Mm -hmm. um, writing uh, it's every day is um, a, a journey for me and mm -hmm. I try to take and, and learn and you know do the best I can as I go along but yes I have found many difficulties trying to accomplish this just with the the beginning with starting well just starting writing is 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 difficult um, 
you know, start with having a great idea, but sometimes it's like, well, where do I go from here? Yeah. And just sitting down and planning everything. Everyone has their own method of how they write, whether it be a book, a story, an essay, a movie, whatever it may be. Me personally, I feel it helps to outline um, everything from beginning to end. Okay. Um, one thing that I do when it comes to screenwriting and trying to develop a screenplay, I have a, a large cork board and I separate it into three rows. So mm. the first row is for act one, the second row act two, the third row act three. And I take index cards and I pretty much write a little blurb for um, every scene. I kind of try to break down the acts. You mm. know, act one, kind of like the introduction to everything, getting to know the characters, learning about what's going on with them, and then what changes what um, decision they have to make to kind of start the, the action of the story. And that's what act two kind of explores this, this change of the character, what they're going through, um, you know, the climax of it. And then act three is kind of like the resolution of everything, them solving the problem mm -hmm. and um, things kind of resolving at the end. And I take the index cards and I just kind of break it down as to like what happens kind of almost scene by scene, just a very like quick blurb, you know, I don't know, the kid gets cornered in the cafeteria by the bullies, mm -hmm. you know, the next scene, uh, the kid gets beat up, mm -hmm. um, what, whatever. And I mean, I just kind of use that as a guide so that as I write, I kind of have some sense as to where you're What's, going. Right, exactly, where I'm going. And I can kind of expound on it as I write. And hopefully it'll kind of develop into something worthwhile. <laughs> oh, well, that's, you know, that's that's always the, the dream you want to make. You want it to make sense. But uh, I, I guess you described the the uh, prototypical three-act structure. And uh, uh, I know everybody has their own method of trying to keep right. it in line. And what you described there is has been suggested by many people. That yes. You need to structure it so you don't want to write from the hip. That, that's, exactly. that's basically what it, what it comes down to. So for, I guess, anybody out there that's trying to do it, you probably don't want to just want to sit down and write today and, you know, and not have an idea of where you're going. Um, I at, at one point, I tended to almost write backwards or write the, the final scene mm -hmm. and I wasn't married to it, but I would write that final scene out and then I would start from the beginning and say, okay, how do I get to that point from here? And much like, you know, I, I, I did a timeline method. I would, you know, uh -huh. I have plot line A, then I have plot line B, and then I, and off of that, I would spout off these branches of major plot points within the story and then it would lead me and interjoin right there at the end. Oh, okay. So, you know, that was that was my personal method. And um of course this this is is art. Uh it's not quite like math. It's uh <laughs> a very subjective form. Definitely. Not as objective as uh you know, mathematics. Right, there's no one way to do it. I mean there's people have their own methods and it's just you have to find what works for you. Yes. Uh, but now, as we sit here in, in the CSB studios, again, free plug for them, <laughs> uh, we're, we're in the Atlanta location. Technically, the building is just outside of Atlanta, but, uh, <laughs> you know, who, who's counting that? Uh, we're in the Atlanta location, and Atlanta is a far cry from Hollywood. <laughs> it is uh, It is not, I mean, you know, there are studios here, and, and uh, it is branched off and it has grown but um the the level of opportunity let's let's say mm -hmm. uh, how do you as uh a be, you know you, you're getting into it you're beginning how do you feel about your chances uh within this city as uh do i have a shot of of uh starting to write because you know you, you're you know there's people that's on this listening to this that probably within Atlanta or mm -hmm. outside of Atlanta, different states, Midwest, uh, up north, or whatever the case may be, they, you know, there are far more people outside of Hollywood than there are in it. Right. So, you know, you personally, how do you, how do you feel about your, your chances of like, I got this script, I can, I can go where? 
That is a very good question. Um, I find that it's very difficult to try to get into the industry through screenwriting if you are a quote unquote unknown artist mm-hmm. as of right now, if you're not already established in the industry, if um, you don't have any connections, um, you know, you're kind of fresh out the gate, just trying to get your foot in the door. I find it to be difficult. I have attempted to make some sorts of contacts trying to get scripts read and <laughs> I um I found a lot of challenges. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that um, one way to kind of get your stuff into the right hands is by trying to secure a talent agent specifically for the literary side with screenplays. And I have attempted to reach out to several agencies in California and I find that it's very hard because many agencies will not accept any unsolicited material from someone unless they are able to get a referral mm. from someone in the industry. <laughs> but if you are new to the industry, there's yes. no way you can get a referral because you don't know anyone yet. It's you the know? classic catch-22. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a huge problem I ran into. I'm not saying every agency does that, but there are quite a few in California that do. I haven't tried to reach out to any in Atlanta, Mm -hmm. but I do know that there are um, some agencies that that represent screenwriters in Atlanta uh, and in Georgia. Um, But I know that a really a good suggestion if you are trying to get your scripts read or um, by someone in the industry is to go the the. the screenplay competition route. Okay. Um, that is a great way to get exposure, to get your stuff seen by the right people. I know there are a couple of really high class, um, popular screenplay competitions, one being um, Script Pipeline. Okay. I know that their finalists, they have a, a good many people who have been discovered, whose scripts have been bought, one including um, Snow White and the, Hunts- and the Huntsman mm-hmm. that came out, what, years ago maybe yeah well three or four years ago I yeah believe. i know that movie actually came from this competition when the finalists wrote the script and that's how producers actually discovered it and i've been hearing you know success stories from that route i'm not saying it's you know everyone who enters <laughs> but <laughs> if, yeah. you, if you didn't make it to the finalist round that's a good way to get exposure uh, indeed um, but it's difficult it's it's very difficult <laughs> And and I want to uh, make it clear, you know, this this conversation isn't to deter anybody that's uh, uh, thinking about getting their script done or you know sitting down and writing it down. But by all means, I do suggest that you at least take the effort, definitely, and, and try. It's definitely, I, yeah. I think um, you know, just because things are difficult, that that definitely, like you said, should not deter you from trying to go that route. And especially if you love it and this is what you want to do, you know, go for it, give it your all. And I mean, I think the key is being persistent. And not letting, you know, no's and, and negatives affect you and, and stop your process. I mean, you just, you want to try to get it out there. You want to, you know, get feedback from it. You know, there are, are different ways you can go about it. But you definitely should should try your best and don't let people stop you. No, you shouldn't. Um, and again, you know, a lot of this is just so that, uh, you as the listener know what you're you're up against now uh, one of the other options that I find um, for screenwriters that don't have the connections which again you know I would say and this is just a number off the top of my head this is not anything that was written any any typical statistic I would say at least 95 percent if not more of the uh, aspiring screenwriters out there have no connection right whatsoever <laughs> um but you also live in an age where technology has uh kind of helped tether the field it hasn't it hasn't yeah. evened it out in terms of uh, uh money you know <laughs> but if you want to have a movie made mm-hmm. you can essentially have your movie made now right. So as a screenwriter, you do stay in a, a town that has uh attracted a lot of um, up-and-coming directors, a lot right. of up-and-coming actors, yes. uh, a lot of uh, p- 
production people that mm-hmm. are trying to work their way in as well. And, you know, just almost every aspect of what you can get done in the movie, you can find on a smaller scale. So, yeah. Uh, so the question there is, has the idea of, okay, I have this script. Ideally, I would want to have it in Hollywood mm-hmm. where I could, you know, say, get a $30 million budget attached to it. But that may not be that likely. Right. No, uh, it's not, you know, very likely for me or you know most other people. But if you find or partner with another director or one of the smaller uh, production companies that's in town and that and this goes to people that's listening also. Uh, you may be able to get your your movie produced. Have you thought yeah. about or have you reached out to yet or are planning to reach out to uh, production companies within the city limits or, you know, finding people at, at these networking parties or film festivals that you may be able to work up and, and do something with? I actually have thought about that. Um, and that is a great idea. And especially being here in Atlanta, because there are so many people who are involved to some capacity or want to be involved with the filmmaking process. You know, you have a lot of aspiring directors and, you know, cameramen and and lighting people. And I mean, just, you can find someone, you can, like you said, you could either reach out to a smaller production company or you could actually connect with people, other aspiring film or filmmakers and create it yourself. Yes. Maybe not a feature film, but maybe a short. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be a great start, especially if you're having, you know, if the writing process is kind of slow and very difficult, start, you know, on a smaller scale, a five minute movie, 10 minute movie, and get together with people, reach out to people who are aspiring filmmakers like yourself, and then you guys just, just make it happen and make it, make a short, enter it into a festival. Uh, if it's well written, you know, that could be a great way for you to get exposure. Um, And, you know, who knows where that may lead to. But I've spoken with a couple of friends about doing that, just kind of creating a a little short and doing something with it and trying to, you know, get ourselves out there and and get people to see what we can do. I think that's a great way to go. Yeah. Again, I think that the the advent of the technology that's available to you, you're almost at a point now that, if you want to do a movie, if you want to get into the industry, you know, uh, as a filmmaker, director, writer, so on and so forth, and you are not in Hollywood or you don't have that Hollywood connection, you may have to just produce something on your own. Right. Yeah. Just to be seen. Yeah. yeah. And I would I would almost say and, and I know everybody doesn't want to hear it, but I, I would almost say that you're shortchanging yourself to shoot that option down. Yeah, I agree. You know, I completely agree. Like I, I, you're right. We we do live in a day in age where that is possible, which is actually quite wonderful if you think about it. That we yeah. have that option, and uh, I think that that definitely is the option that we all should consider. Uh, yes, and I, I will say this, and I, I, this is uh, me sidebarring a little bit that um, uh, if you're not somebody that has uh, high end cameras and whatnot. Uh, there are actually film festivals out there that cater to people that would shoot on mobile devices. Huh, uh, so wow. big shout out to Mobile Film Fest on Twitter. <laughs> uh, they, they've uh, favored it and retweeted me on the several occasions. So that's, that's a big plug for them. Uh, <laughs> mobile Film Fest at Mobile Film Fest on Twitter. So, yeah, that, there, are, there is actually, you know, that that festival and people. And uh, my last guest, uh, Mr. Johnny Blaze. Uh, Big shot to him also said it himself. He's like, I've known people who shot movies on an iPhone. Wow. So, you know, the the option to bring your script to life does exist. Mm. Now, uh, again, for for those uh, screenplay writers who only want to be screenplay writers and not necessarily the person that's directing or trying to acquire equipment and stuff like that. The suggestion here, partner up. Definitely. Networking, very, very important in the screenwriting and just overall filmmaking. You know, just if you don't have anybody else out there that can help you, you probably need to go looking for them today. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Let's talk about some of your your particular talents, you know, just just to give me an idea of what you do. And, and you know, somebody out there may want to know uh, what kind of movies you are aiming towards because you never know where that director might be sitting who's looking for that script that's going to launch him off. So uh, what type of genre do you typically push towards? Well, I um, I haven't written a great many screenplays, but the few I have written, they have been faith-based mm-hmm. and also romantic comedy. Um, in terms of, of um, movies that I enjoy watching, I okay. love action movies and romantic comedies. So Those why, are my top two. So why haven't you written the action movie? Yeah, I know. It's coming. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I figured... Um, that I, I feel like that those are two areas that I would do well with when it comes to screenwriting, just because I love watching them. I've seen so many of them. Okay. I feel like, you know, I have a, a good understanding of, of how they work and, you know, the structure of the, the stories and that type of thing. And, um, yeah, I would love to just kind of, you know, focus on those two genres. I, I, I Yeah, I think in the future I plan to definitely – you know, focus on those genres. So. Okay, and uh, the the faith based genre mm-hmm. is uh, a pretty unique niche market all in itself. Yes, uh, yes, I would say that if if you have that screenplay out, you know, you you, you there are I can't remember the name of the production company here. My gosh, um, they produce Fireproof and um, oh yeah, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> um, they they're based in Georgia. Um, Gosh, it's like I think it's two brothers, and they've done Courageous. Yes, and, they have. Um, they've done about four, four movies now, four or five. Done yeah. several. They're really talented. And actually, I looked into them. They are very. Um, they don't accept any. They they write yeah. their own material. No, nobody nobody they write their own accepts things. solicited material. Right. right. <laughs> that that's, that's the other thing. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm glad you said that. So we we have to root back around to you know what the the obstacles that you as a screenwriter are going to face. Nobody accepts unsolicited material. So right, it's very difficult to find someone who does. I, I don't think anybody does. So, so <laughs> if you're out there and you're thinking I'm going to write this and I'm just going to ship it off to uh, some production company and that they're going to be like, hey, here it is. Let's, this is it. Let's make it. No, right. Uh, and and they're not doing that to be mean. Oh, you know? right, definitely not. No, no. <laughs> so you know, let, let's let's clarify that they <laughs> they only do that normally to protect themselves yes they don't want the the idea that okay we have this script and it may be something very similar to a script that they're already producing that you're going to turn around and say you stole my idea exactly so so, (laughs) yeah you you want to find somebody that can uh feed that script in for you yes so yes no nobody no production company however big or small takes unsolicited material right exactly so, yeah you, you i'm sorry <laughs> that, <laughs> that that's the only thing i can really say for that i'm sorry you're, you're gonna have to try to find somebody that can that can get that off for you and and as ashley said earlier it's the classic catch 22 yes uh again in the the uh the documentary that i saw there's a fantastic scene that they cut in starring william shatner who, who was playing a guy who's trying to sell his screenplay and you know he's he's getting the runaround. He's like, well, if I could solicit my own material, I wouldn't need a, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't need an agent now, would I? You know, so, I mean, it's, it's something along those lines. Exactly. You, you have to you have to watch tales from the script. It is yeah. very important to you. And also, <laughs> just like I feel as a time saving issue, that that was, is probably a reason why they don't accept unsolicited material. Because if you think about it, there are, there are so many people out there who you know want to write. Um, you know, who want to get fame from writing, whatever it may be, a movie, a book, what have you. Mm -hmm. And they're submitting their stuff to these companies and they're just getting flooded with all this material. It's like they don't really have the time to like sift through all of it. And I think that, you know, especially with the big name companies, that they know if it is presented to them through an agent or through someone who's already in the field, who they trust, who they know, then they know that it's not going to be garbage that, that they'll be reading. <laughs> and so it won't, you know, waste their time. 
Yes. If that makes sense. It does make sense. I mean, uh, of course, you know, some some garbage kind of filters through, but yeah, it, <laughs> yeah. But yes, you can't really I, I completely would, block that. But no, <laughs> they try. You, you can't block it all. But you know, I, we get the idea that no, it, it, if I had to sit there and go through tons of scripts, it would drive me up the wall. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that that does help them. And, and again, it comes back to this: it is a protection measure for the company, whether that yeah. that's protecting yeah. their time. Or protecting legality it is it basically all boils down to that so uh yeah you, you're gonna want to have to go through those proper steps and find somebody that can that can uh, represent you but unfortunately mm-hmm. the finding the representation is is a whole nother can of worms <laughs> so yeah it is hard it's very hard <laughs> It takes you back to independent filmmaking, which is what this podcast is about, is yes. independent filmmaking. This is this is what I push it for. Mm-hmm. Write your script and create it so that you can write towards having it done yourself. Yeah. Do you write for your budget? That is that is a, another question mm-hmm. that I that I toss around with other screenplays. When you write, are you writing considering how much money this could take? I actually um when I first started, I did not. Mm-hmm. Like, when I first wrote my first script, I just, you know, I don't know, it was just a story <laughs> that I wanted to tell, and I thought it was cool, and, you know, I just was writing. I didn't think about any of that. But um, on my second script, I started, like, looking up more stuff about screenwriting and trying to learn more about the process. And I actually have come across that bit of advice about writing um, for a budget and, you know, being more likely to be accept it having your script accepted bought sold what have you if it isn't you know this 200 million dollar budget of film you know yes. <laughs> odds are it'll be easier to get a script sold if it doesn't cost that much money to make because you are a new artist um you a new screenwriter unheard of and i would feel like that they would be more likely to take a chance on you if it's you know not such a huge investment on their part Um, and that makes sense to me so I think that it's important to write for your budget even though you have this amazing idea that will require all this (laughs) you know um, CGI effects and you know all this cool stuff but at the end of the day I think it'll be the smart choice to go the economical route and um. (laughs) And, and yes write for what you have potentially available to you but you know how many Mm -hmm. times have you heard the story where We've been trying to get this movie made since yeah, 1999, true. and we finally got it. <laughs> you know, I mean, there, there are reasons behind it. And yeah. I, I know that it sounds insane that a script could be sitting, floating around Hollywood for like 10 years. Right. But, but you know, sometimes it just doesn't work. You know, you, you, there, there are mm-hmm. a lot of moving parts in just in the script uh, portion of getting things done. If, if Let's just say that you do have connections and you you finally do find that person that can help you weed the field and Mm -hmm. now i can make submissions well now you got to find a production company that's willing to do it yeah you have to find a a talent that the production company likes or that that is marketable or you know that can kind of push this along and maybe director because i mean you hear stories like that too. It's like if I found a good actor, I couldn't find a good director. If I found a good director, right, I couldn't yeah. get a, a marketable enough actor. So, yeah, I know this is scary. This, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to people out there, yes, this is this is scary stuff, man. But you know, the, all of this is to say that if you're going to do it, you need to be doing it because you like. Well, no, scratch that. You need to be doing it because you love yes. writing. You need to love that script, right? So, yeah, I mean, it, it, is, it is rough. It is scary, and this is a lot of information we're giving you. But, you know, I think that if you are serious about doing this and you want to, like, really give it a good shot, I think that it would make the most sense to kind of go by what you said with networking with other people in your area. And being in Atlanta, it's so great. We are just so fortunate to have so many talented people who are pretty much have the same dreams that you have. And it's pretty simple to connect with someone like-minded like yourself and just kind of partner up with them. And, you know, you guys make a little movie and, you know, you do something with it and you get that exposure from a film festival. I know a great website 
that I visit a lot when I'm looking to work on independent film, you know, acting-wise, writing-wise, whatever, is lovetoact.com, and that's two as in the number two. Mm -hmm. That's a great site to find filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers who have experience. You know, some have equipment, some have have been making independent shorts for quite some time, some are new to it, but they all want to make a movie and they love it. And that's a great way to kind of get on board with a project and meet people like yourself. And then who knows what you guys can can create. (laughs) Thank you for that. You're you're very kind. Uh, Yeah, but you're you're right. If you can't get to a... um, a networking environment, wherever that may be, because I, I don't necessarily always endorse the uh, paying for a two hundred dollar ticket to right, yeah. to network. <laughs> and you won't, you, I'm not going to say you won't hear. I can't say it doesn't work. I just don't have two hundred dollars to spare. Right. So, you I know. So. That. So yeah, I mean, uh, if you're in a networking environment, whether that be online, you know, love to act dot com or Facebook or you know whatever the case may be, if you can get to a film festival, which is probably a, a cheaper ticket, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I think you know some of them uh, may be as low as twenty five dollars just to attend. So yeah, you you definitely want to be there and you want to be around like minded people who can help push your art and furnish your art now. Here's some of the other untold difficulties of uh, <laughs> of screenwriting when you're just a screenwriter. Sometimes you are at the mercy of the director or the production company or whatever the case may be, whether that be Hollywood high or you know independent level. Uh, particularly when you have written something and they feel like, all right, we want to go this way with it. Mm. Um, are you mentally prepared for the idea that, okay, I've written this, this is my baby, this is mm. draft number five, six, seven, wherever. <laughs> and now the director's telling me that, you know, he doesn't like my, you know, second act and, they should really be, you know, falling in love right now where I've been trying to b- give it a slow build and, you know, they're supposed to ride off in the sunset together and he wants them to get a divorce, and, you know, whatever. Are, are you mentally prepared to have your stuff tampered with? Because tampering with one script is almost... Oh, see, I, I wish I had the camera on because the, the look on her face that says it all. But, but tampering with one script is like commonplace so are you are you mentally prepared for that i think it depends on what they're <laughs> trying to tamper with okay um i uh, i understand like i feel like I, i'm a pretty flexible person and i understand that when you hook up with a producer and they're actually gonna you know make your movie that's a, a quite an honor i feel anyway personally for me that would be i'll be so honored if someone believed in my story enough to want to put money behind me mm-hmm. you know find the people get what's needed and make this thing come to life okay i would be amazed and so thankful for that and i would look at it kind of as a partnership between us to to make my vision well i guess both of our visions come to life okay. and i understand that with that there comes some flexibility some compromise and I would be okay with some of that, but it just depends on what to, to the extent of that compromise. You know, okay. I'm not going to compromise on everything. I'm not going to say, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it. No, I definitely couldn't do that, <laughs> but I would be understandable, but I would expect for that producer to be understandable as well from okay. my perspective. Okay. Now, now let's take this a step further. Because now the the scenario that you're describing is more or less the, the independent scene scenario where you're probably going to have some some flexible say so. Right. So now let's provide this scenario that you have your script, you find we're going to call it independent company B. Mm-hmm. They have some money, but they just want to out and out buy it from you. So you're not involved um. in the process. 
at any point right. other than to provide the script and take the check. And so now right. you're out of the picture. Now, at what point does the art top out over the monetary value? <laughs> or does the monetary value top out over the art? I mean, because now, now you're forced that you have to make a decision. Right, yeah. So wh- where where do you go? And, and you know, we're, we're using you as the example of uh, what some screenwriters may be preparing themselves to deal with because believe me if you're selling that script and you're giving it to a production company it is far more likely that they will just want to remove you from the picture altogether and do what they want to do with it Mm -hmm. so are you prepared for that i'm pretty sure i would be um if i was in that situation i i understand how things work when it comes to, you know, making movies and, and Hollywood, you know, I've read different stories on screenwriters about, you know, them giving up their rights and then this is what happened to their movie and it wasn't what they wanted to happen. And, you know, I've, I've heard those stories. <laughs> I've heard, you know, positive stories as well. So I, I have a good understanding with that reality. I, I want to say that I would, having that understanding I would be able to to do that mm. if you know that was my only option because for me it's important to get the story out there to okay. get it told and if that was if my option was either this producer comes and buys it from me and I'm out of the picture I have no say so whatsoever I would prefer that I think t- versus it going on the shelf and no one ever knowing anything about the story. Okay. Um, and then also, but I would, uh, I would add to that uh, contingency that it would have to be, well, especially if it was a producer who I felt understood the story mm. and who I felt like would reflect it in a positive way, even if it's not completely my vision. But I trust them enough to, you know, not just completely butcher it. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I would be much more comfortable. But yeah, that is something a reality that I probably, hopefully, will one day face. <laughs> well, <laughs> I get to that yeah. level. Yeah. Uh, does it surprise you that there are screenplay writers out there that have uh, taken the stand of this movie must be made for ten million dollars, and I won't accept a penny less, or you know, even when they have no leverage to the to the world that um <laughs> it doesn't surprise me but it it confuses me that someone would have that mindset but it doesn't surprise me that that would happen just because of all the crazy things that go on today <laughs> in the world and the decisions people make and you know i just it doesn't surprise me to that extent but it really confuses me that someone would haggle over that um when I see it being a privilege to have someone want to invest in you and, and, you know, they believe in you so much that they want to put your stuff out there. I'm not saying that you should, you know, be like, or accept something for free or accept something less than what you're worth. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that you should recognize that not everyone gets that opportunity to have their stuff put out for the world to see and if someone approaches you to do that for you then that is something that you shouldn't take lightly very good okay now the last thing that i would uh say here or bring up is uh tying into that uh picking what hills to die on so in the scenario in the, that we had previously that you have some sort of say so because you know again within this city uh, you may hook up with a film director or production company that's smaller and and really willing to have you there, especially if you're willing to uh, aid or help out in whatever mm-hmm. whatever capacity. Because let's be honest, the smaller the budget, the more hats you are going to wear. Right. You, you know, you may have walked in there as a screenwriter, but you may turn into set designer or you know, location <laughs> manager right, or yeah. whatever the case may be. So. Uh, trying to go onto one set as a hand or a actor or whatever capacity mm-hmm. that you tend to do it, 
there there's a line that you have to kind of walk not to offset the director or the production mm-hmm. in going into divaism. Oh, <laughs> right. And and when I and, then, and let me clarify, let me say for you and the listening public, when I say that, I do not necessarily mean women. Right, yeah. For the for the <laughs> two or three sets that I've had, I've only gotten that from men. Hmm. Only men have given me the divaism <laughs> situation. But, you know, that's that's a story for another time. Uh, so, you know, at what point do you, you know, find the the line? Uh, do, you, do you have any hills that you're willing to die on where you say, OK, look, this is important. I got to have this in here. Or, I mean, you may present it a different way, but, you know, this this is this is something I'm, I'm wanting to fight for. I want this actor. I want, you know, I promise this person this role. You got to have them in here. Are you willing to go to bat, you know, and and willing to die, more or less, <laughs> to, you know, fulfill that promise or, or get that scene or whatever the case may be? Um, it, for me, the most important part would be making sure that the that my script maintains the integrity and the vision that I want it. Okay. When it comes to anything else outside of that, who's going to direct it, who's going to star in it, um, who's going to be any crew member on set, mm-hmm. that to me is, is open. Like the, My only um, request for that is that it be someone qualified for the job. You know, I don't want them just picking... <laughs> <laughs> their cousin who's an actor to be in it because the cousin has a great look for it, it or it whatever happens. it may be. It, it definitely does. You know, <laughs> I I don't need, you know, I'm not particular about it being a big name person. I just want to make sure that this person can do the job well. Okay. You know, I want them to go through the audition process and, you know, they'd be the best one for the job. Okay. That to me is, is what's important. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I feel, I feel like I'm pretty easy, easy to work with when it comes to things <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't need star treatment or, or the main stars in the film, but I, I want it to be well done and I want it to reflect what I'm trying to say and it being the script, if I wrote it, it's really important to me mm-hmm. and I just want that to come across. I want you know, whatever the theme is or the meaning behind the film is to come across to the audience the best way possible. And I just want qualified people to work on it. And if I have that, I'm happy. Okay. Now, you know, I was, I was going to end on that question, but you just said one other thing. Now, so I have to get this out. You know, filmmaking is by nature a political process. Yes. It is unfortunate, but it is a very political process. So, you know, we, we go to the star thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Sometimes the line between this being produced and it not being produced at all is whether you are able to attach a star to that script. That's very true. Um, because that that means that the movie will make money. We have this star who appeals to this audience. Mm-hmm. They will come and see it. Exactly. No matter how <laughs> big or small that person may be, they, exactly. they look at it and say, okay, well, at least they have so-and-so. Mm-hmm. He has, you know, he was on TV at least in the eighties. So, so yes. somebody knows him. So, uh, you just said that you want to maintain the integrity of the script. So let's, you know, let's paint this scenario. You have your script, you have your romantic mm-hmm. comedy, and you don't particularly have any stars in mind for it. Mm-hmm. But when you go to the production company, they say, "Hey, you know, uh, Todd Bridges is looking for a script, <laughs> and we got him." And he wants this thing, and he's you know he's a name people know him. So let's let's give it to him and kind of rework it. And we'll we'll raise the age up a little bit. I know that you wrote this for some twenty something crowd, and we'll, we'll just <laughs> we'll make it about forty five, you know, fifty, whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. <laughs> just so we can have somebody attached to it, and you know we can get this thing produced. Does that begin to bother you? Does it does um, it begin to bother and, and you know and all due respect to Todd Bridges I like Todd Bridges right I do too yes <laughs> but but that's the first name that came to mind so you know so, so let's just let's just say that or you know the, let me let me be a little bit more diplomatic let's just say that they they swap the genders or 
you know, change it from black to white or, right. you know, <laughs> instead of 20 something, they, they age them up or they do it in reverse. You might have originally written it for, you know, 45 year old and then they push it down. It's like, oh, let's make this a teeny bopper comedy. Right. So, you know, when they start doing major swaps like that yes. or offer you to do major swaps like that, and then and you're starting to have to play the political ball. <laughs> you know, now uh, your your first instinct in that scenario is <laughs> yes, I do. No, I don't. Um, and I know I keep saying this, but no, I, I want would... you, I want you to say it because you know the the point here again. You know, for for those that are inspiring, mm -hmm. you know, of course they're going to have to make their own decisions, but. Uh, at what point does, you know, are you willing to go for the integrity of, right. of the script? You put a lot of time, effort and heart into making the script. And, mm -hmm. you know, somebody comes along and they say, hey, this is this is a great comedy. But, you know, I'm, I don't necessarily see, you know, I don't, I don't want to see a love story between two 40 year olds. Let's you know, right. push it down to 17, you know, and, right. and you feel like there's there's heart there, you know, because to change age that much or something like yes. that using that as an example, it means a lot of things have to change with it. Exactly, yeah. it's um, That is a, definitely a major change. And I feel like it really depends on how I would respond to something like that. Mm -hmm. And I say it depends because if um, it depends on if I'm still, if the script, even after those changes, if the script still maintains the overall message that I was trying to relate. So for example, my first script I wrote, it was faith-based, mm -hmm. and it was about these two sisters, and it was kind of like sibling rival rivalry, kind of like Cain and Abel mm -hmm. type of deal, but it was with females and their relationship with their mother, and it played out well, but the main story focused on their relationship. So if someone wanted to make that into a film, but they wanted to change the, the characters from females to, to male, mm -hmm. I would be okay with that because I wouldn't really lose the main um, the main things I was trying to say with the movie because the movie is about redemption and um, family relationships. Assuming um, that they didn't make any major exactly. changes, with the right? But like changing the characters, that's a main that's a that's a major change. Yes, it is. But if that was, it just depends because changing the gender. Yeah, it kind of, I have to re rework a lot of things in the play, I mean, the screenplay, but it would still maintain everything I was still trying to say. So I would be, you know, I would I would probably give in to that one um, if that was like, you know, the determining factor of we're going to, if we make this movie for you or not. I'm like, okay. okay, yeah, I'll change to make them guys, but everything <laughs> else has to stay the same, like the foundation of it has to stay the same. They have to have this, you know, this um, terrible relationship with their mother or maybe their father. It's <laughs> fine. But, you know, everything else has to stay the same. Okay. And as long as that is maintained, you know, I can work with it if I had to. I wouldn't want to, but, like, if that was, you know. The determining factor. Then I would say, okay, I'll make that change. But everything else, you know, uh, still yeah, the same As thing. long as they don't just screw around with it all together. Oh, right, but, you know, yeah, yeah. This is a faith-based movie, so, you know, we, we like the idea, but can we make them guys, and can they be from, you know, I'm going to use the stereotypical example, like, can they be from Compton? And, right. You know, yeah. like, may, maybe we could make them gangbangers, and they right. can, you know, they <laughs> they can find some level of redemption after one of them dies right. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a shootout or something like that. So, yeah. You know, now now that that is I don't know your script, but I'm saying that just off right now sounds like that would be a huge change to what you you know, what you just pitched there more or less. Yeah. So so, you know, once you go down that road, I mean I'm assuming that you're still relatively willing to do it as long as the end result is okay, we're here. Mm -hmm. This this is where this this movie has to wind up. Yeah. Because, like, for me, especially, you know, starting out, um, I understand that opportunities to have your stuff produced, they, they, do, they do not come along often. No. So if someone is really interested in something I wrote, but they want to make changes, but they're still willing to stay true to 
what I was originally trying to say, I feel like I would give in to that. That mm -hmm. being, and I will look at it as, okay, A, I am maintaining my original vision to some extent, to the main part of the extent of what I was, you know, of what I wanted. Mm -hmm. The message is the same. And B, I feel like that, you know, these changes is still portraying a really good movie. I feel confident, you know, I like the story, even though it's not originally what I intended. Yeah. But it'll still give me kind of props as being a screenwriter and it'll get my name out there. It'll give me, you know, the exposure I need to hopefully continue on. Exactly. Because if you continue on after that first one, you know, the the more you put out there, the more um, fame you get, the more exposure you get. I feel like I'll have more um, behind me to um, kind of to say no. Exactly. To say no and still <laughs> get someone else who's interested and still be able to produce more movies, you know, so I feel like it. It'll still help me in the long run. And you have to kind of consider that, you know, but you definitely need to stay true to what you originally wanted to say. Okay. And all of that comes down to being willing to play the game. You are absolutely right. You, you got to be able to do the politics. Mm -hmm. um, I certainly want to thank you for coming in to do this podcast with me today. This no is uh, quite fun. And when we do the uh, screenwriting volume two, Perhaps you will uh, come back and join us again. Yes, thank you so much again for letting me be a part of this. I, I actually have learned a lot just listening to you, and, and now I know to um, follow you because um, <laughs> I really enjoyed this, and I enjoyed the conversation, and I can't wait to hear your conversations in the future with your other guests and all these great tips you have on <laughs> the wonderful world of filmmaking well thank you uh, and i'm you know I, i've said it a couple i'm learning as i do this along with everybody that's coming in and everybody that's listening we most of the people that have done this have uh, been aspiring there, there have been some some experts that have agreed to come on but i you know of mm -hmm. course because i'm talking about this before them i'm not at liberty to say <laughs> I've been trying to get the people that know and are actually in the distribution field to come nice. in here and then talk. But as such, with uh, working out deals with people, you know, you, mm -hmm. you can't really release it until they they actually say yes. Right. <laughs> so we won't do that. But I I I'd certainly again want to thank you for coming in and uh, doing this podcast, and for those people that are listening to this podcast right now thank you for either listening to the live stream version of it or downloading it which is available on blog talk radio and itunes you can get that and if you would be so kind to hit the follow button or the like button and you will get the notifications for all future podcasts and uh you know we try to keep this thing relative to the independent film market and hopefully these conversations are enlightening to some degree uh i will be trying to talk about acquiring actors i believe that will i think that is the next topic you know that's on my slate we have a uh, uh actress that's coming in and and to kind of uh enlighten you on what is it that you need to do as a filmmaker you have no credits to your name. You have no movies underneath you. You don't, you know, this is your first script and you don't have any money. So, you know, what what is it that you need to do? Not just to find actors, because you will find actors. Yes. But find quality actors <laughs> and not just quality actors. We go up one more level, but find quality actors who are dedicated to what it is that you're doing. Because believe me, and I have nightmare stories about this to share as well. It is nothing like being on set when people have to leave and go oh, and do man. some other stuff so it, it only makes the uh work that much harder so yeah if you if you're um the guy or the gal behind the scenes working the camera and uh producing this stuff you definitely want to know that because you want people that will give you every bit of what you need to get things done and i would say that even for crew you know this filmmaking is a long arduous process <laughs> trying to get a shoot done inside of three hours is probably not the most ideal circumstance for you to do it eight or ten hours usually is the topper so yeah you want to you want to tune in for that 
that should be the next one going on. And, you know, a topic that I want to touch on a little bit later on is can you make your own stars? Ah, so we, we will uh, talk about that. Uh, again, thank you, everybody. Be sure to come back on Block Talk Radio, iTunes, and you can catch me jibber jabbering on Twitter every once in a while when I, you know, when I'm actually up and not sleeping. So yeah, Twitter at Mr. Green seven five, and you find me on there. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We will see you next week. You've been listening to the Fanboy Film Talk podcast. Be sure to subscribe and join us every week right here on iTunes and Blog Talk Radio. Follow Brian at Mr. Green 75 on Twitter and stop by the All The Way Live Facebook page. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next show.